Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today, I'm going to talk about data warehouses and the core elements that you need to plan for when you are standing up a new one. So let's get started. There are four separate and distinct components to consider in a data warehouse or business intelligence environment. First is the operational source systems. The second is the ETL, or Extract, Transformation, and Load System. And the next is the Data Presentation Area. And last but not least, in fact, it's the probably the most important element, is to deliver data to all the business intelligence applications. And we'll show you how to make sure you get your good, solid data presentation area so that the BI applications can get the most information. So, source systems are the operational systems of record that capture the business transactions. Think of the source systems as outside of the data warehouse because you have little or no control over the content and format of the data in these operational systems. The main priorities of the source systems are processing, performance, and availability. The operational queries against source systems are usually narrow, one record at a time type queries where, that, are, that are generally part of the normal transaction flow and they're severely restricted in their demands on the operational system. It is safe to assume that source systems are not queried in the broad and unexpected ways that data warehouse or business intelligence systems typically will query the data. Source systems maintain little historical data, usually, although there's likely a repository of historical data in a database of some sort. A good data warehouse can relieve the source systems of much of the responsibility for documenting transactions in the past. In some cases, the source systems are special purpose applications without any commitment at all to share common data, such as product or customer, geography, or even calendar data with other operational systems in the organization. The extract, transformation, and load system of the data warehouse environment consists of a work area, data structures, usually in staging tables, and a set of processes. The ETL system is, is everything between the operational source systems and the presentation area. This is where all the processing is done before users actually see the data. Extraction is the first step in that process, getting the data into the data warehouse environment. Extracting means reading and copying the data needed into the ETL system so that it could be manipulated further. At this point, the data belongs to the data warehouse. After the data is extracted into the ETL system, there are numerous potential transformations such as cleansing the data in, in ways such as correcting misspellings, resolving domain conflicts, dealing with missing elements, or parsing into standard formats. Combining data from multiple sources and deduplicating the data is also important. The ETL system adds value to the data with these cleansing and conforming tasks by changing the data and enhancing it. In addition, these activities can be architected to create diagnostic metadata, eventually leading to business process re-engineering and improving the data quality in the source systems over time. A personal experience is somewhat applicable here because when I was managing a transactional system for a set of users, the data warehouse and business intelligence people would occasionally call me and let me know of a data anomaly that needed fixing or suggest an enhancement to the system that would be beneficial to the BI users. While I was an expert on how to keep the system running, and the users were experts on how to use the system to perform their function, the BI people became experts on the data as a whole and could see the broad overall picture of the queries and information that was needed by those decision makers that used it. The data warehouse and BI people working together with the systems they supported became a synergistic relationship that benefited all concerned. The final step of the ETL process is the physical structuring and loading of the data into the presentation area's target dimensional models. 
because the primary mission of the ETL system is to hand off the dimension and fact tables in the delivery step, these subsystems are critical. Many of these defined subsystems focus on dimensional table processing, such as surrogate key assignments, code lookups to provide appropriate descriptions, splitting or combining columns to represent data in appropriate values, or joining underlying third normal form table structures into flattened denormalized dimensions. In contrast, fact tables are typically large and time consuming to load, but preparing them for the presentation area is typically straightforward. When the dimension and fact tables in a dimensional model have been updated, indexed, supplied with appropriate aggregates, and further quality assured, the business community is notified that the data has been published. The data warehouse presentation area is where the data is organized, stored, and made available for direct querying by users, report writers, and other analytical BI applications. Because the backroom ETL system is off limits, the presentation area is the data warehouse environment as far as the business community is concerned. It is all the business sees and touches with their access tools and BI applications. For the Kimball method, the data is presented, stored, and accessed in dimensional schemas, either star schemas or OLAP cubes. The presentation area must contain detailed atomic data or records that cannot be broken down any further. Atomic data is required to withstand the assaults from unpredictable ad hoc user queries. Although the presentation area may also contain performance enhancing aggregated data, it is not sufficient to deliver these summaries without the underlying granular data in a dimensional form. In other words, it is completely unacceptable to store others only summary data in dimensional models while the atomic data is locked up in normalized models. It is impractical to expect a user to drill down through the dimensional data almost to the granular level and then lose the benefits of a dimensional presentation at the final step. Although data warehouse users and applications may look infrequently at a single line item on an order, they may be very interested in last week's orders for a product of a given size or flavor, package type, or manufacturer, or for a customer who first purchased within the last six months or reside in a given state or a, have certain credit terms. The most finely grained data must be available in the presentation area so that users can ask the most precise questions possible. Because user requirements are unpredictable and constantly changing, you must provide access to the exquisite details so they can roll up and ad to address the questions of the moment. The presentation er data area should be structured around business processed measurement events. This approach naturally aligns with the operational source data capture systems. Dimensional models should, co should correspond to physical data capture events. They should not be designed to deliver the report of the day and enterprises business processes cross boundaries of organizational departments and functions. So what this is really saying is that the accounting data should be able to be accessed by accounting people in an easy structured dimensional model, not necessarily just throwing all the data into a big glob. They should be somewhat organized the way it was captured physically from the original systems. So in other words, you should construct, construct a single fact table for atomic sales metrics, rather than populating separate, similar, but slightly different databases containing sales metrics for sales, sales metrics for marketing or logistics, and sales metrics for team, finance teams. All the dimensional structures must be built using common conformed dimensions. These common conformed dimensions in the Kimball method are referred to as the data warehouse bus matrix. Other synonyms for, for this are conformance matrix or event matrix. 
without shared conformed dimensions, a dimensional model becomes a standalone application. Isolated stovepipe data sets that cannot be tied together are the bane of, data where, of the data warehouse movement as they perpetuate incompatible views of the enterprise. You might as well just have all of the source systems to query. If you have any hope of building a robust integrated data warehouse environment, you must commit to the enterprise bus architecture. When dimensional models have been designed with conformed dimensions, they can be readily combined and used together. The presentation area in a large enterprise uh, data warehouse solution ultimately consists of dozens of dimensional models with many of the associated dimension tables shared across different fact tables. The final major component of the Kimball BI architecture is the business intelligence or BI application. The term BI application loosely refers to the range of capabilities provided to the business users to leverage the presentation area for analytical decision making. By definition, all BI applications query the data in the data warehouse presentation area. Querying is the whole point of using data for improved decision making. A BI application can be as simple as an ad hoc query tool or as complex as a sophisticated data mining or modeling application. Ad hoc query tools, as, par as powerful as they are, can be understood and used effectively by only a small percentage of the potential data warehouse user population. Most users will likely access the data via pre-built parameter-driven applications and templates that do not require users to construct the queries directly. In my experience while working at Boeing and, and multiple data warehouses, there were a variety of tools all the way from Cognos with pre-built uh, pages that queried the data that, you, that the users just set parameters and then got their data uh, that way, all the way to those who used data analytical tools such as Toad or even Microsoft Access. So there's a tremendous variety and it's expanse between those that are experienced using query tools versus those who need the help by having those pre-built tools where they could set the parameters themselves. I hope you found this video helpful. Please hit the like button if you found it useful. Uh, let's get it out to more people and please subscribe so that we can continue growing the channel and getting you good, more, more good information. Thanks.